we're back home now from uh, taking pictures and we're going to be processing these prints. So I'm going to lay out, first of all, my chemistry here. Let me show you what I got. So I have a series of little plastic cups that I use. And the cups are, uh, I have a piece of tape on them that's marked to the 100 milliliter level. And so I have, starting here, I'm going to mix my developer into this 100 milliliters of water. I have a rinse water. I'm going to have some stop bath, which is already pre-measured Kodak indicator stop bath. But you can use simple household vinegar. You know, it doesn't, even the dilution doesn't matter. As long as it's an acidic solution, it'll stop the development process. Here's another rinse. And then our fixer. I already have some... Uh, fixer already poured up or mixed up so I just need to fill it up to the 100 milliliters level and then we have the two final rinses there so our chemistry is all set we have a rotary um, platform for the drum I have a timer so I'm going to be mixing up a dilution that's about 1 plus 15 uh, of this developer into 100 milliliters of water so the way this works is it's basically 1x plus 15x equals 100, so 16x equals 100, x equals 100 divided by 16. So 100 divided by 16 is 6.25 milliliters of concentrated solution into 100 milliliters of water. And I'm going to be measuring it with one of these little uh, pipette devices, six and a quarter. So I'm going to open up my Hilford multi-grade concentrate developer. And I'm going to dispense six and a quarter. And I like to do several dispenses of water of the solution in this uh, applicator in order to flush out as much of the developer as I can. Well, we are back in the dark room, and so I have my developing tank. So I've taken the reels out, out of the tank, and I have this uh, drafting tape, and I usually cut about an inch long piece of this, roughly. And um, But what we're going to do is you notice the curve it has for being in the film tank in the uh, camera canister. I'm going to wrap my little tape into a loop and I'm going to stick it along the back side of the paper and then in the tank I'm going to put the print so that it's following the curvature of the tank emulsion side facing in toward the tank and I can fit about four of these comfortably at once in the tank and process four at once. And the idea is we're only going to put about 100 milliliters of chemistry in the tank, which is something like, you know, this much liquid maybe. And so as you rotate the tank continuously on the roller base, the, the prints are going to be immersed repeatedly in and out of the liquid for three minutes for the developing process. So I'm going to load up the rest of these pictures and let's get to developing. see what we got here. I'm going to pop open this container. We have two that are pretty faint, like overexposed, and two that are pretty good. So let me do a little rinsing here. So let's look at... I'll just grab one of these. This is... Take the tape off the back of it. This is the one that was the roof of the uh, 
of that structure at the Elena Gallegos. It's kind of interesting. And this one, oh yeah, this one is interesting, very cool. This is probably the best of the batch right here. This is kind of a landscape image of the tree and uh, the footpath. I think this was the first one we took, in fact, over right by the parking area. Very cool. Well, we got some good results. The other two, they look a little bit overexposed, a little faint in light, but that's kind of what happens sometimes with this business. But hey, we got a couple good pictures out of this one batch, and um, I'm excited about it. So we're going to have to rinse these pictures and for a while because they're fiber-based, and then I'm going to have to squeegee them and dry them, and then I can put them in, uh, in a little protector sleeves. Well, so what I do with these prints here is they have a natural curl to them, a natural curve. I have these little cable tie wraps with nuts on them for weights, and you sort of slip the print in the little cable thing as a, as a taco, a, f a paper taco, and you stick it in the rinse water. And what that does is it submerges the print down into the bottom of the tank so it doesn't float on the surface. Well, so I have my pinhole prints uh, rinsing. Now, instead of rinsing the fresh water down the drain in the house, I have them rinsing outside underneath my tree using a garden hose, and the water that's overflowing the tank there is watering my tree. It's watering my landscape, so this is kind of a practical thing to do on a hot day in the desert. You don't want to waste fresh, precious drinking water. Rinse your prints outside in the landscaping. Okay, so I have my hose all the way down into the bottom of the tank and we're rinsing fresh water on these prints and the tank is overflowing and watering my tree and uh, we're going to let it rinse for 15 or 20 minutes or so because this fiber-based paper does need some rinsing to get the fixer out of the fibers of the paper. Well, I'm back in the dark room and I've finished rinsing my little prints. I have four of them. Two of them are okay. Two are really overexposed. Um, I think the shutters slipped off in the, in the box. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and dry all four of them. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going to squeegee them and uh, wipe them down on the back side, squeegee the front side, and then tape them to a sheet of glass. So I've squeegeed uh, and wiped on the back side with a paper towel these four pictures. And now I'm laying them out on a sheet of glass and you want to get them spaced so that the distance between them is a little bit smaller than the width of your tape. And then I'm going to be taping them together. So I overlap the tape about roughly a couple millimeters, maybe an eighth of an inch. It's not real critical. This kind of tape, this drafting tape, um, does not stick badly to the front side of the paper. Release is okay, but it holds it good also. I'm putting little loops on the ends of each strip of tape so I can peel it off of the glass after it's dried. Okay, there it is. Ready to go into the drying cabinet. So, the sheet of glass is in the drying cabinet. The screen here is removable, so you can hang long rolls of sheet film, a roll film, but you can also put the sheets of glass on the screen and use it for these pieces like this. Normally I keep the, the heat lamp on to make it nice and hot, but this is the garage. The garage is going to be really hot today, so I'm going to just run the HEPA filter fan and turn the light off, close the door, and it'll, there's plenty of heat drawn in from the hot garage to keep this stuff dry. So back in the office, while the prints are drying in the cabinet, I wanted to show you this. I have these um, clear file slide mount protector sheets. Uh, there are uh, four times uh, five is twenty to a, a sheet here, but they are just the perfect size for putting these uh, direct positive little inch and three-quarter square 
prints into, and what I do is I have um, I have nine sets laid out, enough for a whole batch of cameras, and I have a print next to a sheet that describes the exposure, the date, uh, and what the subject is. So we work our way through the uh, the rolls, the cameras, and we put them all in these sheets, and that's kind of how I've been using it uh, as a way of archiving these prints and also keeping the data intact. Well, so it's been uh, an hour or two in the film drying cabinet, and uh, this is what we got. So we're going to peel off some of this here masking tape and see what we get. So, as I indicated earlier, we have two images that came out pretty good. We have, this is our first image at the Sandias. It was 8 second exposure. And the one above it is was the last exposure of the roof of that overlook. It was a 30 second exposure. What's interesting about it is we have this interesting light flare coming from the sun that's above the roof making a flare off the pinhole. It's a very kind of an interesting image. Um, I like it. And then the other two these two canister cameras, the shutters had slipped down their sleeves, plastic sleeves, and they had slipped down over the below and revealed the pinhole. And so these pictures got fogged with, um, you know, extraneous light before the exposure was ever made. But you can kind of see the shape of that wooden railing on that walkway. But it's just the pictures are too bright, overexposed. But I'm going to put them in the protector sleeves and. Uh, save them anyways. I had one other little surprise to share with you. I had five uh, pinhole cameras to use today and I only developed four of them and the fifth one was the actual first image that we shot at that uh, wooden barricade fence uh, overlooking the uh, Sandias. And so I went ahead after uh, I did the, did the other four images I went ahead and developed this one and hey it didn't come out too bad. This just came out of the drying cabinet so let me pull off the tape here and uh, let's see so this is there's our cactus and the sandias we got a little bit of clouds and sky and the and the road in front of the camera there so that's came out pretty good that could have been slight it could have been slightly less exposure but otherwise it was pretty good so I'm happy this image of the wetlands pond looking through the window of the uh, overlook shelter I was very happy with. Uh, this was the best image from the whole day and uh, it's just indicative of what this format is capable of doing. Um, it's very satisfying. One thing I'll say is this whole canister camera project is an experiment and every time you go out and use it, uh, you find some new learnings. Today's learning was really about those plastic uh, sleeve type shutters that slide up and down. They move too easily, so I'm going to get a little piece of gaffer's tape and stick on the, those sleeves to keep them from moving when they're being stored in the box. And so we, hopefully in the future, we won't have problems with pictures being uh, overexposed and fogged. But this is a great uh, example of what it's capable of doing. I hope you enjoyed seeing the entire process from beginning to end, how uh, I use this uh, direct positive paper in cameras and develop it in a little rotary tank. Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and you have yourself a great day.